Today, we're going to take a tour of German-speaking nations. The German language is spoken by more than 95 million people, and it's the most commonly spoken native language in all of Western Europe. So here's our first stop, Germany itself. As you can see, it's only been a united country since 1871, but it's where a majority of German speakers live. Welcome to the first country on our tour of the German nations, Germany. Standing behind me is the Brandenburg Gate. It's known as the symbol of Germany. There's a lot of history with it. If you look on top of the gate, there's the statue of the goddess and four different horses. The goddess was actually taken by Napoleon when he invaded Germany back to Paris as a trophy. And the Germans never forgot that. So when they defeated Napoleon in 1815, they brought it back and they made a couple little additions to the statue. They made the statue make sure that she was looking to her left. Why? Well, to the left of the Brandenburg Brigade, if you look over here, is the French Embassy. And the Germans always wanted to make sure that the goddess of Germany was looking upon the French Embassy and basically saying, don't mess with us anymore. It's a little, it's a little cool piece of history. If you look on the other side of the square, you'll see the U.S. Embassy of Germany right here. So this is basically the pre-ultimate spot in all of Germany, right center of the capital. So follow me and we'll go to the next site. While in Germany, we might as well visit the tallest structure in the entire country, Berlin's TV Tower. If you look, it's over 900 feet high. Let's go. The TV Tower was built in the 1960s and has become a symbol of the city of Berlin. Each year, more than one million people go up to the observation deck. And here we are waiting for the elevator. Guys, can you wait? Can't, can't wait to get up? Can't wait. Can't wait. Can't wait. Absolutely, can't wait. right? Wait. Absolutely, definitely. We'll see great views. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Wow. <laughs> From the observation deck, you could see as far as 30 miles away, not to mention all the sites within the city of Berlin itself. You can see where I was previously at the Brandenburg Gate. The wooded area behind the gate is called the Tiergarten. It's similar to New York Central Park. The structure with the dome is the nation's capital building called the Reichstag, and it's where the German parliament meets. You can also see the Berlin Cathedral, the largest church in the city, along with the city palace. It was destroyed after World War II, and it's now being rebuilt to symbolize the nation's rebirth. Well, it's time to leave the TV tower and on to our next stop. Germany is also famous for the Autobahn. Highways where in many areas there is no speed limit. So our next stop takes us to the city of Munich to see the cars Germans use to drive on them. Of course in Germany they've got cars and today we're at BMW headquarters to see all the new six-figure models. Come on, follow me. Here we are. Hey, is your new car? Yeah, this is my new car. Do you like it? It's pretty cool. It was only a hundred thousand. Only a hundred grand, huh? And how do you get plan to get it out of this building? Um, I'll figure out a way. Okay, cool. <laughs> 
Sounds good. I think it's locked. It's locked? Uh, I'll come back at me later. I have to make a small purchase. I have my dad's credit card. What are you intending to buy? The white shiny one. The white shiny one? Let's go see it real quick. Let's go test drive it. Everybody, come home. Only open the left. Thanks, Dad. Uh, how much is it, Gabby? Really, not that bad. Not that bad. How much is it? They start at twenty five hundred. Twenty five hundred. Yeah. Twenty five hundred. But I'm a really good yeah, negotiator. but th that's also in euros, Gabby. You know that, right? Oh, it's, it's th thirty nine thousand euros. Oh, it's fine. It's fine, huh? I have a credit card. You swipe once, doesn't matter what numbers on there. Oh boy, your father's not going to like this, let me tell you. I already broke one, I don't think you would mind. <gasps> oh no. <laughs> Mr. Butchko, you got to see the car. What car do you want, Dylan? Well, you know, you know, bicycle power. This is the car you want? Yeah. Huh. It looks like something, you know, Tyler McKay would want or something, you know? I mean, his, it has his name written all over it. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah, I can see it right there. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> the next country on our tour of the German-speaking nations is Austria. And today, we're here in the city of Salzburg. Salzburg is famous for two big things. The birthplace of Mozart, and of course, the movie, The Sound of Music. Come on with me, I'll take you around. As you can see, Austria is smaller than Germany but was founded more than a thousand years ago. Salzburg is the capital city of the province of Salzburg, one of nine states in the country. As I mentioned, it's where they film the sound of music. You heard of it, right? Here in Salzburg is where they film the sound of music, and I'm right at the same spot where they sang the Do Re Mi song. In fact, that gives me a little idea. Speaking of music, the city is also home of Mozart. This is the very house where he was born. Let's go inside. Now this is the room where Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart was born. <laughs> yeah, right? On display in the room were personal artifacts, even his preserved hair. Also on display are original letters from Mozart, along with the actual music that he wrote. This is Mozart's very own clavichord, a predecessor to the piano. This was really his. And of course, this is the gift shop here. And no Mozart gift shop would ever be complete without, of course, Amadeus. 
The city also has great architecture and fresh water from the Alps. It's so Does it taste good? Taste it. Are you gonna taste like water? Yeah. Taste water. Does this good though? Yeah, it tastes good. Because the river is stream. Tyler, dunk your head in. Clean your hands off before you uh, drink. How does it taste? Good. It's good. It's good water. 10 out of 10, we're drinking it. Now, believe it or not, Salzburg was actually its own country for centuries. It was ruled by an archbishop in the Catholic Church, who also happened to be a prince, and he ruled from this building right here. And as you can see, Salzburg has a beautiful street structure. It's got a lot of cool fountains and churches. And all around you, you just see the glamour of the city. The next country on our tour of German-speaking nations is Switzerland, home of chocolate, Swiss cheese, and a whole lot more you'll see. Come on. Switzerland is unique in that the country maintains a strict policy of neutrality when it comes to international relations. And for that reason, it's avoided both world wars and is not a part of the European Union and the Euro currency. The country is in the Alps, and one of its most famous peaks is Mount Pilatus. Let's take a trip there. To get up to the top, we're going on gondolas. Step in and let's start our ride. On the way up, we pass the mountain's famous toboggan tracks. You'll love this ride. Okay, we're at the top. Let's get out and make our way to the summit. Thank you so much. Well, we got one little problem. The top of the mountain is stuck in a cloud. Let's see what we can find up there. Well, it's a nice try being up here. There you go, Ryan. I guess now we go back down. Beautiful weather, absolutely. As you can see, beautiful weather, beautiful scenery. We're in the middle of a cloud. Whoa, that was good. That was trip. We're in the middle of a cloud. Fortunately, from the lower elevations, the scenery is just a bit more clear. We'll take a different way down the mountain by using the steepest cog railway in the world. It's a great ride. Plus, it takes a while going down. In the meantime, just relax and have fun. It is, it is. The last country on our tour is by far the most elusive. Do you see it? No? Here, I'll zoom in. See it? No? Okay, let me zoom in more. See the purple area now? That's the nation of Liechtenstein. With a population of only 37,000 people, it doesn't even have its own money. Instead, 
they use the Swiss franc. Welcome to the country of Liechtenstein, the second smallest country in the world. I'm going to take you around today and show you this little, little tiny country you probably never even heard about. Let's go. Liechtenstein is only 68 square miles, but it's ruled by a prince. Currently, Prince Hans Adams II is head of state, but girls, I've got a surprise for you. The heir to the throne is Prince Joseph. He's 20, single, and the family fortune is valued at over $7 billion. So if one of you doesn't come back from this trip, I'll understand, don't worry. The country is also entirely in the Alps, so the scenery is just awesome. Here we are at the border, about to enter the country. Ah, the capital city of the Dews home of the prince's castle, and wouldn't you know, they even got a McDonald's here. So, let's get off the bus and see what we can find. As you can see, this country is crowded and full of people. This is the main street in the capital city, believe it or not. So here is the city hall of Vaduz, and right next on the hill is the castle of the prince. As you can see, Liechtenstein is surrounded by hills and mountains. And it's basically just a few streets of shops. A little souvenir place right there. Not too much. Just a country of only 34,000 people. The country is also known for its beautiful stamps, unique looking license plates, and of course is a big skiing area during the winter. Before we end our trip through the German speaking nations, we should also take a quick look at something which unites them all together. The food. Besides hamburgers, hot dogs and pretzels, there's a lot more to discover. Oh, hey there. I figured, since we're on a tour of German-speaking countries, I also must also find the food they have in Germany. The cuisine is great. If you look here, this is sauerbraten. This is beef with nice, delicious gravy. This is red cabbage, which is delicious. And this is spatzel. It's kind of like their pasta a little bit. And these are dumplings. They're all part of traditional German cuisine. So, I hope you had a good time on this trip. We saw Germany, Austria, Switzerland, and Liechtenstein. I hope to learn a lot of new facts, and I hope you come back for our next field trip. Meanwhile, I'm going to get back to eating here. See you later.